Hey everyone, it's Alyssa from Alyssa's Bake Shop and today I'm going to show you guys how I made a basketball themed dessert table. It was for a client for their child's birthday party, so let's begin. When I work with a client lately, what I've been doing is sketching out the ideas for them. So I actually recently just got an iPad as a gift. It was for my birthday and I downloaded Procreate and I've been doing a lot of sketching. So when it comes to doing a dessert table or just a bunch of things in one order I definitely find sketching it out helps a lot just so that the client can visualize what we're trying to go for so after we kind of came up with some things that she wanted and what would work with her budget we decided to do cake pops cake and cookies so I'm gonna start with the cake pops so I'm just dipping them as you can see here and what I did was I made these cake pops a few days in advance and I kept them in the refrigerator and then I took them out about an hour before I needed to start dipping and I find that this helps me so much when it comes to cracking I find that just having them set up in the fridge and then just have them gradually come to room temperature without trying to rush anything really makes a difference now I know sometimes when you're baking you don't have all the time in the world but if possible I always recommend to put your cake pops out the sooner the better and I just I always have a much better experience when I do it that way whenever I bake I always make extras because as you can see this one which did not turn out very well I always like to experiment I think it's really good to have extras as well just in case something drops or cracks by accident you never know and you don't want to be left having to make one or two individual treats and you might not even have time to make the treats. So just from experience, all I can say is definitely make extras, especially if you're doing a new design that you're a little worried about. So I never had made basketball cake pops before. I don't make cake pops often. It's not really something that I promote very much because it was a dessert table. They wanted to have some of these extra things. I experimented. I first used black food dye and I tried to paint on the basketball lines, but then I realized that that food gel is just not going to dry it it really will not set ever onto the melted candy what I did was I experimented and I had left them out for a few days and when I saw that it was just you know when people would eat it it would get all over their mouth I decided I had to change course I tried just using some black uh, candy melts that I melted down but that didn't really work either so then finally I wound up putting on black royal icing as the basketball lines and they just they set so easily because royal icing dries so quickly and they're not going to stain your teeth or your mouth or anything like that and as you can see there if it's a little bit bumpy all I did was I just used some water to just wet it down and just make it a little smoother my cake pops are $3.50 each and this is with custom designs, colors, and cake flavor. If I was not doing custom, then they would just be $3 a piece. Now, if you think about it, and someone told me once, just look at the bakeries around you. And you can even take Starbucks as an example. Currently, Starbucks sells their cake pops for $2.75 each. And you know that those are being mass produced. So because cake pops are multi-steps, we have to bake the cake, we have to make the icing, we have to roll it, freeze it, thaw it, shape it, get all the decorations, the sticks, the, the packaging to put them in. With all of that factor, I think that $3.50 each is a very reasonable price. I know that they are very small bite-sized items, but the amount of work that goes into each individual one is very time-consuming, so that's how I came up with my price. Another piece of advice that I have if you're going to be doing a big order is to do all the little details to do as much as you can that doesn't require needing a fridge. So what I mean is if you have things that can be left out at room temperature, if you have little extra decorations, in order to save time when it comes to the actual assembly, I always try to get this stuff done first. The client already had images that they wanted to put on the cake themselves, so all I had to do was really just some of the extra little details. One of the details was to have basketballs on top and on the side of the cake. So in order to do that, the first thought that came across my mind was, oh, I'll use a cocoa bomb mold. So I'm using a mini small silicone sphere mold, and you can actually get these as a set. You can get the small, medium, and large set. Cocoa bombs are typically made out of that larger size, so these really were very small. So something that I did off camera was I went back and I made larger 
uh, basketballs just because the basketball on top of the cake had to be bigger and I knew that these little ones were not going to cut it. The way that I did this was I just melted down some black candy melt and then I went in to make those lines using an edible food brush and I just went back in to really clean up those edges. The next step was to melt some orange candy melts in order to make them look like basketballs. So what I did was I just melted it in about 30 second increments. You don't want it to be too hot because actually it'll start to melt the black candy melts underneath. So that was the problem that I was having was because the chocolate was hot and even though the black candy melts had set, it was just heating them up and it was kind of mixing the colors a little bit. So I tried to do this as quickly as I could just to get it in the fridge. So when it came to this, I decided to do two layers of the orange candy melts just because it needs to have a lip or it needs to have a rim in order to connect the two together. So that's why you see me just kind of pushing it up with the spoon because I'm just trying to get that chocolate up there to just be thick enough so that when I go to connect them it'll be easier for me. Candy melts set up really fast so I only needed to keep them in the refrigerator for about five to ten minutes just a few extra minutes just to make sure that they were ready to go and after that was done I took them out and I melted some more just so that I could do that second layer. To connect the two halves I just heated up a very small saucepan just on really low heat and I just put them on there for a few seconds connected them and then they're ready to go. I made the sugar cookies the day before that I was going to decorate them just because it was just having to do with my time constraints. The thing is, I also work full time as well. So in order to get everything done, I really have to plan out my week. And if I had any other advice, it would be exactly that. Just to look ahead and plan out as best as you can, just because you need to be able to fit in time. Something that I personally always think is that if you think something is going to take one hour, then double it just in case. Because usually when it comes to baking, there can be some unexpected things that happen, especially if you're trying new styles. I had never made basketball sugar cookies before and I was excited to try it because I thought that they would be relatively simple. And sometimes I tell you, the things that are the most simple can actually be the most difficult. Another tip that has benefited me so much that I've learned over the years making sugar cookies is that you really need to give yourself enough time and that will not only help your cookies look better, but it'll also give you a peace of mind. Sugar cookies take a lot of time because they require a lot of layers. And I guess it does depend on how many layers that you're using or how detailed your design is. If you write down exactly the colors and the design that you're gonna do, it'll really help you eliminate any guessing of, oh, should I let this dry or should I do this color or should I do that color? Of course you can experiment as you go, but when it comes to an order, I just like to be as prepared as I can be. So I wrote down exactly what I needed. So on day one, I baked the cookies. On day two, I do the main layers as you could see here. And then on day three, I went in and I added some details. By giving your base layers a whole day to dry, you're actually going to also prevent bleeding. And because I'm using very strong colors like black and red and also not a strong color, white, something that colors bleed into pretty easily, I knew that I was going to have to have enough time for those layers to set up. So here's a shot of just the cookies all nice and covered in that royal icing and now they're just going to set out to dry overnight. Now we're gonna start with the basketball cookies. So the first things first is I don't have an airbrush machine which would have made this really cool, but I do not have one. So instead what I decided to do was use some food gel spray and I got this off of Bake Deco. I can put in the links below. This was really awesome and here's the side by side. You can see one has a bit of a more orange tint compared to the other. It's also a bit shinier too and even when the food dye did dry it still had that shine to it which was what I thought was so cool. So I just took a cookie, sprayed it, and then moved on. It was really simple and it dried really quickly. What I did was I tried to spray the outside because I just, I wanted it to have sort of a gradient effect. And because the colors were really similar, the oranges actually, they turned out more similar than I had planned, but I thought it looked more natural though overall. This was a new technique and it had actually worked out and I love when that happens. Now for the jerseys, I did go in and I did use my projector. I'm really trying hard not to use my projector anymore because I want to get better at writing freehand, but I was just really, really worried that it was not going to turn out perfectly, especially because they wanted it to look like the Chicago Bulls jersey, which has a very specific font, and I just thought, you know what, 
I'm going to just use my projector for parts of it because it's a tool, it's something I bought, and you know what? I'm just going to use it. So if you do have a projector, that's awesome. I think it's just another tool to help make our cookies look great. And if you don't have a projector, you can still do this freehand. What Something that I like to do when I do try to do things freehand is I still pull up the font or the word or the image on my computer and I just use it as a guide. And I'm not going to lie, doing the lettering for 16 cookies took me over an hour. It was very small letters and they had to be very square and sharp corners and I would use my scribe tool in order to fix it as you can see here and it took a long time so I was really glad that I had broken this down into three days because I would have been exhausted if I tried to do this all in one day. Doing these little details will also definitely give you the hand cramps so if you have any issues with your hands I would also suggest breaking it down into multiple days. So now after those letters dried, what I did was I started to pipe on the jerseys and I just wanted to pipe on the sleeves. So I was doing this in multi steps as well. You can also see the cookies in the middle that have the black writing on it. So what made these letters very time consuming and actually here's a clip of it now is that I went over the letters in black because on the Bulls jersey it's black letters with a white outline and I thought that it would be easier to put the white down first and then the black. When it comes to small details, I always make sure to cut the tip of my piping bag very, very small. You can always cut it bigger, but you can never make it smaller, and I hate to waste piping bags. In order to work quickly, I like to put a big sheet of parchment paper down, and then either I'll just test the piping right onto the sheet, as you can see on the top, those little black dots. It's just me testing the icing consistency, or you could put a paper towel down, whatever it is, just so that it's easier to clean in between. For the white jerseys, the lettering was black, and then I was going to pipe on red on top of it. This is, again, just following what the Chicago Bulls jersey looks like. And, yeah, I just did the piping for the second lettering. I did that freehand because I already had the base underneath it as the guide. I also used my projector just to make the number one on the jersey, just because, again, I wanted it to be really perfect. But I did go in with my scribe tool to just make those edges really sharp. Now filming the sleeves of the jersey was a little awkward because I had to kind of have it in the right position for my hand to get in there as well as the camera. For the white jerseys, I needed black and red in order to make those lines on the sleeves and my client specifically asked to make sure that I have those lines so I knew that this had to be an added detail. Although I probably would have added this detail anyway because this is just those little things that really make your cookies stand out. And this only took about five minutes to dry just because it was so thin and the icing was a stiffer consistency. One thing that I think makes your cookies look really awesome is when they're very consistent. So in order to do that, what helps me personally is when I get a cookie decorated that I really like how it looks, I'll put it next to all of my other cookies so that I can just refer to that as a guide. After spending about two hours on the jersey cookies, I definitely welcome doing these basketball cookies. Although, the thing about simple cookies is that there's really nowhere to hide, if that makes sense. So I really had to get the basketball lines to have the right sort of look in order to make it look like a basketball. But overall, once I practiced a few times, I got it down and they only took about five to ten minutes. I wound up baking the cake the night before the event was due and I know that that's a bit risky, but because the cake itself, the decoration was very simple, I knew that I would have more than enough time to decorate. The thing is, I made the filling and the icing ahead of time, so that definitely saved me. The client wanted vanilla cake with cookies and cream filling and Swiss meringue buttercream on the outside. So something just to add in there about me is that I specialize in smaller, simplistic desserts. I really only use very limited fondant. I try to use buttercream as the main decoration in everything that I do, and I try to make everything on my cakes edible. I only do 6 inch and 8 inch cakes. I will do a tier, but I do not do anything bigger than 8 inch. Although I stick to that 6 inch and 8 inch diameter, I will add more layers to give it more height. And when you do have more height, you can get more servings out of your cake. I really should make a video about that. Hopefully I can do that soon. As you see here, I'm just adding bubble tea straws in the cake for support. Once you start getting taller and taller, you really need that extra support.
will share with you that I have put a cake into the fridge before and totally forgot to put in the supports. And while it's really not possible to put in the supports when a cake is frozen and you have to let it thaw, it's not the end of the world and it can be fixed. My client did want this to be black Swiss meringue icing. And typically I would suggest if you're gonna do a black icing to use dark cocoa, but dark cocoa does taste like cookies and cream. So it's gonna change up the flavor. The hardest colors to get in icing are black and red. It's just really hard to get them super rich. So I tried the freezing method. Basically, I made the icing two days in advance. I put it in the freezer and then I let it come and sit at room temperature for about six hours. When you do that, it really helps to darken the color. And just a side note, black icing will stain your tongue. It's just like eating a candy or a popsicle. It's not gonna last forever, but it is a good thing to communicate to your client. Just so we could have some added detail, my client asked to put on some chocolates. So I went to the store and I bought Kit Kats and I bought Rolos. And then you could see I'm putting on that basketball that we had made earlier. And then I also piped on some of the black icing just so that we have some kind of cool little details going on. The inspiration picture that my client had shared with me showed that the cake had a rough edge on top. So that's why you see that it's not smoothed down. Personally, I really like this look. I actually prefer the rough edge. I like things that are not 100% perfect, but that's just my own style. This cake was about seven inches tall, which is what I had communicated to the client because they were printing out their own image and they needed to make sure that it would fit correctly. I made sure that baby was seven inches. Here are all of the elements put together. I thought that it came out really nicely. I like that it had a theme of black, orange, red, and white. I really love when things have very nice themes. Now I'll talk about the price. My sugar cookies are $4 each, and then it depends based on the customization from there. I use these donut boxes that I got on Amazon that I can put a link in below, and they're really perfect because they fit exactly one dozen cookies. I'll also try to link these boxes that I got on Etsy. These were specifically made to transport cake pops. They were a bit pricey, so I'm not sure if I would always buy them, but I really did like how they looked. Packaging is a really big part of the presentation and it's really good especially to buy sturdy packaging so that you know your baked goods are gonna get there in one piece. And then for the custom cakes, all my custom cakes that are eight inch start at $50 and then it goes up depending on the customization. Now it was a morning for pickup, so I just had to make sure that everything was packaged up and all ready to go. And I did use these cute little thank you stickers I've Definitely got them a while ago. I think I got a roll of, of about a thousand, so they've lasted me a really long time. And I just think it's a cute little added touch. You can also put your business card on top of the packages. And honestly, put a business card on every single box that you give out the door because you never know who's gonna be there and who will wanna take a card. Also, I love these cake boxes. They are my favorite cake boxes. I can put a link and they're from Bake Deco. These are like legit sturdy boxes that I know when my client is driving off in their car that the cake will be safe in this box. I know I talked about pretty packaging, but if your cake and your other goodies are gonna go on a far ride, you just wanna make sure that they're gonna be very sturdy. So I put it in a sturdier box and then I put bubble wrap inside there as well. And that was it. And I really like how it turned out. My client was actually really kind enough to send me a video and I love to see it because this is why I do it. And I hope that you guys really like this video and I'll see you in the next one.